morning, church. Let's all stand to our feet across this sanctuary. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning to praise and magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can we lift our hands toward heaven? Let's give the Lord our best praise. Lord, we thank you today for all that you have done. God, we thank you for your many blessings. God, you have been so good to us. And Lord, we welcome you into this place today, Lord, to fill us with your love, to fill us with your spirit, Lord, through every song that is sung through every word that's spoken. God, let it all be done to bring glory and honor to your name. And Lord, we give you praise and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise? was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's all remain standing as we continue to worship this morning as Brother Coy comes to lead us right now.
like to slow things down. We did this a little bit during practice, but when you get to thinking about the words of this old song, sometimes we sing right over them and we don't get what I call all the juice out of it. There's some more in there. Hallelujah, what a thought. Think about it. Jesus full salvation brought. It's called victory. Victory. Let the powers of sin assail. Heaven's gates will never, never, never fail. Why? Because it's victory. Victory. Listen now, wait just a minute. I am trusting in the Lord. I am standing on His Word. And it's victory. Victory. I have peace and joy within. Since my life is free from sin. And it's victory. Oh, victory. Victory. Yes, victory. somewhere in the neighborhood of around 20 people that are dealing with sickness. We have everything from COVID to flu to uh, people that's been in the hospital having surgeries, procedures this week. You name it, it's been going on. But we are going to stand on the word of God that Jesus declared, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So by the authority of the word of God and in the name of Jesus. Our prayer is that sickness would be bound, that pain would be bound, and that the healing power of Jesus Christ would be released upon his people today. If you're in this place today and you have a special need in your life, you need prayer for healing, you need prayer for strength, you need prayer for whatever circumstance, I want to invite you to come to this altar and some of our prayer workers will agree with you in prayer and believe God for victory in your life. Life. Come right now, Brother Coy, lead us in another course of that. Victory is yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. Gives me victory, glory, glory, 
abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Lord, we know that there are many people in our church family that are sick and unable to be here today. And Father, we lift them up to you today. For Lord, you are the source of our strength. You are the strength of our life, Jesus. And Father, we pray for your healing touch. God, those that have been in hospitals this week. God, those who have been at home battling sickness. God, we pray your healing touch upon them. God, that you would bless them. God, that you would anoint them and empower them, Lord spirit soul and body and lord we thank you and father in our remainder of our service today father we just pray that you have your way god we want to lift up the name of jesus for you said if i be lifted up i will draw all men unto me and lord we just pray that your name would be lifted up today lord that we would leave here today changed and renewed by the power of your spirit we pray and ask in jesus name and we receive your blessing today and we give you praise hallelujah can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise? Oh, your blessing, blessings coming through. It's your blessing, blessings coming through. He'll pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. Your blessing, blessings coming through. Your blessing, blessings coming through. Blessings coming through. He'll pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. Your blessing, blessings coming through. Your healing, your healing, healings coming through. Your healing, healings coming through. He'll pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. Your blessing. Things coming through your deliverance, your deliverance, deliverance coming through. Your deliverance, deliverance coming through. He'll pour you out a blessing you won't have room to see. Your blessing, blessings coming through. Your blessing, blessings coming through. Your blessing, blessings coming through. He'll pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. Your blessing, blessings coming through. Your breakthrough, your breakthrough, breakthroughs coming through. Your breakthrough, breakthroughs coming through. He'll pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. Your breakthrough, breakthrough's coming through. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless his name. Let's bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on.
Lord a hand clap of praise. He is worthy. You may be seated if you can. Continue to worship the Lord with this choir as they minister in song right now. We serve a risen Savior. Yes. He is alive forevermore. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah, the name Jesus. that is above every name. Yes.
please, for the reading of God's Word. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter three, let's begin with verse one. These are the words of the apostle Paul writing in his letter to a young preacher named Timothy to encourage him to preach the gospel message regardless of what he faces in this world. Second Timothy chapter three, starting at verse one, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Skip on down to verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works." I preached this message the first time on July 14th, 2019, and as I mentioned to you a moment ago, I believe the, the, the parts of this message are still relevant to what is taking place in our world, especially in our nation, the divisions that we see taking place on the political stage, the divisions that we see taking place in the church world, the divisions that we see taking place even in our families, and we see God wanting wants to bring about revival, but we've got our minds so focused on problems, we got our minds focused on our own heart's desire rather than what God's Word tells us to live by. So this morning, I want to preach to you a message entitled, Be Committed to the Truth. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today for your love, for your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing that comes from you. And Father, in this message this morning, let our hearts be alert. Let our minds be receptive as we receive from you the infallible, the inerrant, the ever-living seed of the Word of God, that you may speak to our hearts, that our lives may be changed forever. By the power of your Spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. We must be committed to the truth of God's word. And in so doing, we need to live a life that is holy. We need to live a life that is righteous. We must live a life that is committed to the truth of God's word. When we look at what is taking place in our nation today and what is taking place around this world and even in the churches today, it is very plain to see that we are living in the last days that was spoken of in 2 Timothy chapter 3. We are seeing things take place today in the world. We're seeing things take place in the church that 10, 15, 20 years ago, we never dreamed would be taking place. Today, there is no longer a set standard of conduct. In other words, if a person wants to be something other than who they were created to be, then society says, and our government says, you just go ahead and be who you want to be. You be what you 
you are. Uh, you be what you identify as and express yourself freely uh, and we'll support you all the way. Uh, and as a result, we have become afraid um, of offending people and we just let them do whatever their desire. And now there is no longer a regard um, for an absolute truth. Uh, we're living in a generation that says, if it feels good, do it. Uh, if you like it, then do it. Uh, there's no longer any shame in immoral living. There's no longer any shame in doing things out in the open. Years ago, people who lived what we call an alternative lifestyle, people who lived a life of perversion, they did so in secret, but now it's parading down the middle of Main Street, and now they're even bringing it into the church and bringing it into the pulpits. I was disturbed. My heart sunk. My spirit was broken as I saw what is taking place in the United Methodist Church as a pastor, a man who's supposed to represent Jesus, a man who is supposed to preach the truth of God's word, the pastor of the United Methodist Church walked into the sanctuary on a Sunday morning dressed as a drag queen. That is blasphemy in the sight of God. Those people have no sense of what God wants to do. They deny the truth. They deny the word word of God. They deny what God wants to do in their life. You see, if we are not careful and if we do not continue in the word of God, we will be deceived and the enemy is going to do everything he can to creep his way into our lives, into our families, and ultimately into our churches as he has done so in many places already. Church, we must stay true to the word of God. We must study his word. We must hide his word in our heart that we might not sin against God because it is the word of God. God that is going to stand the test of time. It is the word of God that is a solid and true foundation. It is the word of God that will guide us into truth and he'll guide us into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We must be committed to his truth. It's the foundational principle of the word of God as a rock solid foundation. Jesus said in Matthew 16 verse 18 and 19, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's the church of Jesus Christ. It's not my church. It's not your church. It's his church. It's his body. It's his family. And you and I get to be part of the family of God. We are the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. You see, over the years, throughout 2,000 years of the existence of the church, the church has been persecuted. The church has been tried. The church has been tested. But through it all, the church has remained strong. And the church has remained steadfast. Church, we must remain strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We must continue to proclaim and stand upon the truth of God's word because it is the truth of God's word that will set the captive free. Yes, trouble will come. Yes, persecution will come. Yes, the weights of this world will come against us every day, but we can be encouraged by the word of God. Second Corinthians 4 verse 8 and 9 we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed through everything that we face we must learn to trust in the power of God Almighty and understand yes the enemy is going to come hell's going to come against the church there's going to be times of sickness there's going to be times of confusion there's going to be times when you wonder, am I going to make it? Am I going to get to the other side? But here's what we need to recognize. When the enemy of the soul comes around us and the enemy surrounds us like a flood, the word of God declares that the spirit of God will raise a standard up against it. And if God be for you, who can be against you? The church of Jesus Christ is going to remain and we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb by the word of our testimony in Jesus' name. Can you give God praise today? We will overcome 
And here's what we need to understand. Because we're getting closer every day, I believe, to the soon return of Jesus Christ. The situations that we see taking place in our world, it's not going to get any better. We've already seen our best days. We've already seen the heyday of this nation. We've already seen our cheapest prices. It's only going to go up from here. People try to say, well, there's no inflation going on. Look at your bank account. Check your check registry. When I bought my house in 2014, the price that I paid on it is half of what the appraisal is today. From 2014 to 2024, the cost of that particular piece of property has more than doubled. Gasoline prices have doubled. The cost of milk and eggs and bread and butter, it's all doubled. It's not going to get any better, church. We need to recognize it's not going to get better. There's not going to be any peace in this world until Jesus Christ, the true Prince of Peace, comes back to this earth again. The Apostle Paul warns us and says, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 that in the last days perilous times are coming. Perilous times. That means there's going to be disasters. That means there's going to be some days ahead that it's going to be difficult. When Alyssa and I was on vacation we had gone down to Florida and when we got ready to leave the cashier at the hotel could not give us a receipt and she wanted to know my phone number and my email address so she can contact me if there was any problem with my debit card because she said there is a global outage and nobody's computers were working. That's just a small taste, I believe, of things to come. In 2020, we had probably the biggest pandemic this world has ever seen as the coronavirus made its appearance suddenly around this world. And I mentioned to someone this morning, isn't it amazing? Here we are about to go into a presidential election and all of a sudden COVID has made a spike again. I know that's not a politically correct statement, but that's what I observe because this is the first time in two years that we have nearly half of our church experiencing sickness at the same time. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus reminds us of the signs of the times as we approach the rapture of the church. He compares the signs of his second coming as relating to the onset of labor pains. And by using this example, Jesus is telling us that the closer we get to the time of his return, the more frequent and the more intense and the more severe the signs are going to be as we approach his return. Today, we are seeing more conflicts in the Middle East than ever before, and I firmly believe that we are on the verge of war that will be a war like no other war this world has ever seen. We have seen more division in our nation than ever before in our history, and the biggest division we see is on the subject of abortion and homosexuality. Our lawmakers today... And so-called freedom experts are working in an effort to secure the legality of abortion. And they're constantly stating that a woman has the right to do whatever she pleases to her body. Hear my words today. If giving birth to a baby was something she did not want to do, the nine months previous, she should have addressed the issue of choices and consequences. Our current vice president and Democrat presidential candidate Kamala Harris promises that if she is elected as president, she will ensure reproductive health care freedom to all women. Let me tell you what that means. She is not talking about genuine health care to sustain life. She wants to destroy life. And as the Democrat Party held their convention this week, 25 babies were murdered through the hellish acts of abortion free of charge. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day that he returns. 
In Noah's day, leading up to the flood, people slaughtered babies. And they offered their newborn babies as a sacrifice to a demonic deity named Moloch. And today, America is the number one nation in the world committing the very same act, slaughtering babies. And we have a Democrat candidate running for president and vice president that the issue was brought up before them and they voted in support of it, that if a baby survives an abortion internally in the mother's womb, that the mother has the right to go ahead and give birth to that baby and set that baby aside and let nature run its course until that baby expires. Kamala Harris voted for it and anyone who votes for her is an accessory to murder. I do not take those words words back. It is a sin. It is an abomination in the sight of God. His word declares the hands that shed innocent blood shall now see the kingdom of God. The education system in our world today, even in our nation, is not what it used to be. We no longer teach the basic skills of learning. People are graduating from college who are nothing more than a bunch of ed educated idiots. Amen? When you can have a bachelor's degree and be a practicing lawyer and not know the names of the oceans and you think the United States is South America and that South America is more Southern America and that you don't even know where Canada is, I'm talking about people I work with in the court system. They don't even know the names of the oceans. Even Ernest T. Bass on Andy Griffith could tell you that, along with Old Man Kelsey's Creek and Old Man Kelsey's Ocean. But we're living in a day where new subjects are being taught in our school system that really should have no place in the schools. For example, the state of New Jersey requires schools to teach a class on LGBTQ history. When I was in school, there was no such thing as that. And if anyone did act in that way, they were suspended from school for immoral behavior. Politicians today are catering to abortionists and those who want to live a life of perversion. And so today we're living in the days of a self-serving attitude. Family time has now been neglected so someone can spend $5 to make $1. They can't make enough money on the job, so they go to the casino and they pay thousands of dollars and get deeper and deeper in debt. And because of that, debt has played a major role in the collapse of many marriages. Children are becoming disobedient to parents, and the government has limited what parents can and cannot do to discipline their children, further allowing their child to continue going in the wrong direction. The stress and the chaos produced by a self-serving lifestyle of covetousness has led many people to begin drinking and partaking of illegal drugs. They have allowed the enemy to come into their life and to convince them that the life he has to offer is better than any other option. And they listen to the lies and they give in to the temptation and now they're lost and they're empty without any sense of direction and they feel as if no one cares about them and that all hope is gone. And we ask ourselves a question, how did it happen? How can it be that someone whose life can be going so good, they had a great family, they had a great job, they had good finances, God had blessed them, but they were not committed to the truth. They did not stay committed to the truth of God's word and their life is on the verge of a total collapse. And because of the immoral lifestyles and the values of today's generation, we're starting to see more and more things now being accepted in the church. We're seeing more and more worldly entertainment making its way into the church. And when we look at the church world today and we look at what's taking place today in the name of Christianity, we see more inventions of men. We see more programs designed by men. We see more programs catering to the works of the flesh. It's powerless. It has no impact on this world. We see music that's taking over in the house of God. We see entertainment taking over 
and, and the house of God. And you look around in most churches today, there is this an obsession with entertainment in the house of God. I've seen some churches, you walk in there, it looks like a nightclub. You've got the place filled with fog. You've got laser lights shining. You've got strobe lights. You've got people dancing. I'm not talking about dancing in the spirit. Choreographed dancing, twirling flags and banners. I mean, it's, it's quite a circus. There was a church in Fort Smith, probably one of the fastest growing congregations in the community. It's become a very seeker-friendly community to the point that basically anything goes. But someone who attends there was telling me about this, that they went there and the worship team, if you could call it that, was singing the opening song. It was a secular song written by Justin Timberlake. I've never heard his music, but after reading the lyrics to the song, I do not care to hear his music. Singing a song in church, the song was called Can't Stop the Feeling. And so I went on the internet to try to look up the lyrics and I was going to share the lyrics with you, but after reading the lyrics, all I can say is the, the words is not appropriate in the house of God and it's not appropriate for a child of God to be reading. But they were singing this in the church on a Sunday morning. And all I can say is that this is further proof that in a so-called effort to win the world for Jesus Christ, the reverse is actually happening. The world is winning the church to the worldly entertainment and the worldly ideas. How many churches have you visited that when you walk in, the presence of the Holy Ghost is so strong that all of your sins are brought up before your face and you experience the real loving grace of Jesus Christ? How many times do you walk into a church where you've seen young people and boys and girls uh, under such conviction because people uh, have been on their face before God? And I hope and pray that we continue to see that here because on Sunday afternoons at 530, these altars are filled and people are crying out to God. People are waiting in the presence of God. So many churches today have lost their power. They have a form of godliness but they're not denying the power. They don't have the anointing that they once had anymore. It's because they don't labor in prayer anymore. They don't worship in spirit and truth any longer. I was at a football game this past week. My nephew plays for the Greenwood Bulldogs, and the Greenwood Bulldogs were playing against the Fayetteville Bulldogs. It was a dog eat dog. And generally on their scoreboard, it says, it, it shows the, the mascot of the team, Bulldogs versus Lions or Bulldogs versus the Tigers. But when you have Bulldogs versus Bulldogs, they had to scratch that. So we had Bulldogs versus GHS, Greenwood High School. And I thought, wow, how creative can you be? Fayetteville, second biggest city in the state of Arkansas, and they're not any more creative than that. But long story short, Greenwood beat Fayetteville 42 to 20. Small town Greenwood built, beat the second biggest city in the state of Arkansas. Go GHS. But I was looking at their football field. They don't have to mow that place. A weed eater is not even needed. When I was in high school, and we had my high school graduation, it come a flood that morning and we had to walk in the wet grass and the mud when we had our graduation. Well, they've overcome that. You don't have to walk in the mud. You don't have to walk in the wet grass. We have AstroTurf on our football fields. And the thing about AstroTurf is AstroTurf doesn't grow. Animals like to eat grass, but animals can't eat AstroTurf. 
And what I see taking place in the church world today is at one time the church was a place that was growing like grass. Uh, the church was a place that had some deep roots, uh, that was receiving some knowledge, that was receiving some nutrients, and was receiving the rain from above. Uh, but when you change it over to AstroTurf, when the rain falls, uh, the rain just falls away. Uh, there is no nourishment. There is no fruit. Uh, there is no vitamin. There is no sustenance to it. Uh, and we have churches today that is nothing more than just a bunch of AstroTurf because they're not being fed. They look good. They look perfect. They look like everything's in order, but they're not being fed. They're not alive, but they're dead in their worship. So many churches today are ever learning, but never come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah, we've got our programs. We've got our seminars. We have our pep talks. We go to district council and general council and we hear the motivational speakers. But listen, what the church of Jesus Christ needs today more than ever before is not some kind of a seminar. It's not a pep rally. It's not some kind of a motivational speaker. But we need to hear the truth of God's word that Jesus saves, that Jesus heals, that Jesus baptizes in the Holy Ghost, that Jesus will enable you to live a holy life, that Jesus Christ will deliver, that Jesus Christ is coming again. This this world needs a revival. This world needs a genuine touch of the Holy Spirit. If we will humble ourselves in the sight of God, he will lift us up. And we must learn the truth of God's word. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We must continue in the truth of God's word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. See, Paul is talking about that we need to continue in what we have been taught from the very beginning of our life. In verse 15 it says that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. That means the word of God has been brought forth. The truth has been instilled into our hearts. And the Bible says that when we get into the word of God and we know the Holy Scriptures, that we're going to be made wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All of the problems that we have in this world, all of the sickness, all of the pain, all of the sorrow, all the suffering, all the negativity, it has a root cause. It was caused by sin which separated mankind from God. In the beginning, when God created this world and everything in it, this world was full of perfection. There was not one single flaw in all of the universe that God had created. Mankind was created to live in perfect harmony with the animals and to have complete and total fellowship with God. But we see in the book of Genesis that Adam and Eve had fellowship with God in the Garden of Eden. And God would come and talk to Adam just as I am talking to you this morning. But when sin entered into this world, a curse fell upon this earth creating separation between God and man. No longer could mankind approach God and speak to him face to face. Sin created a division. Sin is a sickness, and just like any other sickness, sin starts small, but sin continues to grow. And when it's left undone, it can ultimately cost you your life. In Romans chapter 6, verse 20, For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then? And those things whereof ye are now ashamed. For the end of those things is death, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end and everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That simply means that we were all once slaves to sin. And when we were slaves to sin... We were not doing what was right. And the results were that now we have seen in the word of God that the life we were living is wrong. We're ashamed of what we used to do. And now because of the forgiveness of God, by his grace, we, we are now free from the power of sin. We're free from the consequences of sin. We're free from the power of the bondage. And because we're living in God's grace, we do the things now that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. That's 
what God's gift is all about. It's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as a result, you and I have been made kings and priests unto God forever. That means we're a royal priesthood. We're a chosen generation. And because of what God has done in our life through his grace and mercy and his forgiveness, we must continue in his word. We must continue in his will. We must continue to do the work that God has called us to do and to go forward in power, to go forward in his boldness, to go forth in his anointing of his spirit, to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever to declare that Jesus Christ is coming again because we see the signs of his coming all around us. Today the earth is groaning and pleading and crying out to humanity to let this world know that Jesus Christ is soon going to return to take his children home. But until he comes again, we must continue to preach the message of Jesus Christ and be committed to to the truth of God's word. The Apostle Paul gave a commission to Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 8, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing as we lead up to the coming of Jesus Christ we are going to see things take place in this world like we have never seen before Jesus has given us warnings to look for in the word of God in Matthew 24 verse 4 through 14 Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Perilous times are coming and perilous times are here. But the child of God has no reason to be in fear or to be in despair. Second Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In the midst of the sorrow, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of all the trials that's going on in this world, if you will stay true to God, if you will continue in His Word, if you will endure to the end, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus Christ. What? a day that is going to be when we see Jesus, to look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace, when he takes us by the hand and leads us through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that is going to be. Yes, perilous times is going to come, but the word of God also tells us about something else that's going to take place in Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 21. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. 
And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens uh, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into to blood, but for the great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe, church, very soon we're going to hear the trumpet of the Lord sound. The Lord is going to appear in the clouds, and we're going home to be with Jesus. First Thessalonians 4 16 and 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. The we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Only those who have been saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, they're going to go to heaven. If your sins have been washed away, if your life has been cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus, uh, you're on your way to heaven. You have a reason right now to stand to your feet uh, and to give God your best praise. Uh, you have a reason right now to stand and rejoice because you know that your sins have been forgiven, that your name's written in heaven, that when the trumpet of the Lord sounds and the dead in Christ go up first, we have the assurance to know that we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming soon, and one day soon, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you will stay in tune with God's word, if you will commit yourself to the truth and seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will fall into place and you can serve God and live for God all the days of your life and one day it will be worth it all when you see Jesus and hear him say, well done good and faithful servant you were committed to the truth and the truth sets you free and whom the son sets free is free indeed and we will spend eternity with heaven in heaven with Jesus Christ and live with him throughout the ages can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise he is worthy he is worthy all across the sanctuary can we come and gather around this front and can we just lift up our hands toward heaven and just thank the Lord for this promise and make one promise to him and say God I'm going to commit myself to you all the days of my life I'm going to commit myself to you for I want to see Jesus I want to see Jesus what a day that's going to be see, when Jesus steps out the midnight cry the dead in Christ shall rise this room 
With every head bowed, every eye closed, please, no one moving around or leaving. Maybe you're in this room today, or maybe you're watching by way of the internet. And you've heard this message, but you do not have the assurance of your salvation. You do not have the assurance of a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart that Jesus is coming very soon. And the only way to stand before him and to make it into his eternal presence is to know that your sins have been washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I invite everyone here today, those of you that's watching online, would you pray this prayer with me right now? Lord Jesus Christ, I come before the throne of God in the name of Jesus. I admit that I have sinned. I have done wrong in your sight, but I know that your grace is sufficient. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and be my Savior. Right now, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe he died on the cross. I believe that he rose again and that he is alive today, seated at the right hand of the Father. By faith, I confess that I am forgiven, that I am cleansed, I am washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we lift our hands right now and give the Lord praise and thank him for his grace. Thank him for his mercy. We have the assurance to know that one day we will see Jesus. We will live in his presence throughout all eternity. We thank you, Jesus. The one who saved me by his grace. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for they are new every day. Father, we thank you for the promise of eternal life. We thank you, Lord, that you're our healer, you're our savior, our redeemer, our deliverer, and our soon coming king, who is king of kings and lord of lords. Father, I pray that today you would go with us, Lord, that you would bless and keep us. Lord, that your face may shine upon each one of us, God, to be gracious to us. Father, we pray for the peace of God that passes all understanding. God, for your anointing and power to rest upon each and every one of us. And Lord, we give you praise and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise?